radically different movement. Yeah. So I am reading each sentence, and if it is clear, we will go ahead. We are in the chapter equality. No, sorry, the three modes of nature. Sattva rest of us. Okay. A radically different movement has to draw us back from the gunas and lift us above them. Then you have to get rid. In other words, you want simple words, you have to get rid of your identification with body mind life. The moment you know that you are not the body, you are not the vital, you are not the mind, then already, not mentally, spiritually, when you know that you are not, then your consciousness rises to the spiritual planes of consciousness to the self. Okay? So that is what Swami is saying. A radically different movement has to draw us back from the gunas and lift us above them, above the gunas. And the gunas are lodged in the body mind life. Okay, so there are no gunas in the spiritual uh, plane of consciousness. The error that accepts the action of the modes of nature must cease. Again, is we are talking theoretically, but practically, you have to know that you are not the body mind. Okay, that's what it means. The error. It's wrong to think that you are the body. Ninety percent of the time, that's what we feel. That this is who I am. Okay, these are my thoughts. These are my emotions. That has to go away. <clears throat> The error that accepts the action of the modes of nature must cease. For as long as it is accepted, the soul is involved in their operations and subjected to their law. Okay? You don't know that you are the soul. You feel that you are the body mind life. That must cease. And if it ceases, then you know that your consciousness rises to the self and you know that that is what I really am. Sattva must be transcended as well as Rajas and Tamas. In the beginning, to get rid of Rajas and Tamas, you try to look very carefully with your mind at everything and try to distance yourself from your desires and your body needs. Okay? <laughs> the necessity of eating, the necessity of sleeping, other necessities also. All that you slowly withdraw. Now, after you have done that, you have to withdraw even from the mind. You have to know that the mind is not. How do you do that? By looking at your thoughts. Try to see your thoughts as though they are occurring in you and you are not thinking of them. The thoughts are occurring by themselves. <clears throat> Sattva must be transcended as well as Rajas and Tamas. The golden chain must be broken no less than the leaden fetters and bond ornaments of the mixed alloy. This is the uh, image that uh, Ramakrishna also used. He says that attachment to the body is like an iron chain. Attachment to the vital is like a silver chain. And attachment to the mind, when you are sattvic, already much, much better. But that also is actually a chain only, but it is of gold, slightly better than the other two. So, he was saying, he is referring to the golden chain. Okay, so. Sattva must be transcended as well as Rajas and Tamas. The golden chain must be broken no less than the lead made of lead, not even iron, huh? lead fetters and bond ornaments of the mixed alloy. So, lead is the heaviest of metals. So, that's the body. Okay? And the bond ornaments of the mixed alloy. The combination of Rajas and Tamas gives you bond ornaments. Your bond ornaments are your desires, your emotions and all these things. You have to get rid of all of them. And the bond ornaments are a mixture. The Gita prescribes to this end, to this means, to this method, to this uh, end is the goal, a new method of self-discipline. It is to stand back in oneself from the action of the modes and observe this unsteady flux as a witness seated above the surge of the forces of nature. Note the words carefully. The unsteady flux and the surge of the forces of nature 
the movements in the physical world. And you are a witness to that. Your consciousness rises. And how do you do that? By separating yourself from your body needs, your vital needs and desires, and your mental thoughts. Try to watch your thoughts occurring. Okay? And slowly, slowly go on saying, it's an itty, itty method. Not itty, not itty. I'm not the body, I'm not the vital, I'm not the mind. Not in words, but in your consciousness. You distance yourself from your outer nature. So that is the Gita method. Standing back, okay? Distancing yourself. This is also the method of the Sankhya method. In one sense, with the action of the modes, and observe this unsteady flux as a witness, seated above the surface of the forces of nature. He is one who watches, but is impartial and indifferent. He is the experience of the self. You have become, you are only watching, but it is impartial. You are neither approving nor disapproving, just watching carefully and understanding the nature of things. And indifferent, it makes no difference to you at all. Okay? In the synthesis elsewhere, Srenda has said, you are watching your child having tantrums and you are not affected at all because for the child, the tantrums are very serious. A toy has been taken away from her and she's crying loudly. But you are watching all this as though it has no importance at all. So even your own sufferings, even your own uh, desires, when you go up to self, they have absolutely no value at all. Okay? No value, not only value, but they are absolutely insignificant. You are above, seated above, peace and calm and a sense of infinity. Okay? That's what he He is one who watches, but an impartial and indifferent, aloof from them, on their own level and in his native posture high above them. So, aloof from them on their own level. On their own level is level one, where you are identified with your body-mind life, but at that level, your consciousness is not identified with the body-mind life. And on the second level, the spiritual planes of consciousness, native posture. So, I'm using interesting words. He's saying this level two is a native posture. Native because that is really where you really belong. You don't belong in the physical world at all. You belong there at a higher level. That's why you're in native posture. Okay? High above them. As they rise and fall in their waves, the witness looks, observes, but neither accepts nor for the moment interferes with their course. Okay? Just watching absolutely unconcerned. Yeah. When you are watching, your, your watching becomes absolutely sharp. Your observation becomes very, very sharp. You see everything. It's not that you are not affected by the hate and the envy and the desires from below. But that doesn't mean to say that you don't understand the nature. You understand the nature fully well. Your observation becomes ten times more sharp and accurate than when you are in the physical world. Okay? You become very, very sharp. You are not affected, but that doesn't make any difference to the observation. It becomes, you see everything that you normally don't see at this level. Okay. As they rise and fall, what are these rising and falling? Forces of nature. Okay. And what are the forces of nature? At the body level, hunger and sleep are the force of nature. At the vital level, attachments, desires, these are the forces of nature at the vital level. At the mental level, what are the forces of nature? Thoughts. Sometimes also emotions. Then they come from the vital. So these are the forces of nature. And you are seeing them. They are rising and falling. They come and disappear. They come and disappear. Always. All your thoughts and all your desire also. You may have a desire one day. Next day the desire is gone. So there is a rising and the falling. Okay. The witness looks, observes, but neither accepts nor for the moment interferes with their course. Now, Sri is saying something very interesting. He's saying for the moment. Why is he saying that? Because 
later on when your consciousness rises from the higher mind to the element mind and even higher then you see that you can interfere in the lower in the lower consciousness and you withdraw the permission you you realize that you are the anumanta and then you withdraw the permission for those things which you don't like below now you are not a witness anymore now you are in, you are interfering but from above you withdraw the permission so that's why it's saying for the moment okay so in the beginning the lowest level of the self is witness only but slightly higher level element mind or intuitive mind what happens is that you start realizing that you can change things below you can change your habits of the mind you can change your habits of the mind vital and body body is most difficult but mind and vital is easier and you withdraw the permission slowly slowly the habits in the vital and the mind start changing they disappear okay first there must be the freedom from the impersonal witness afterwards there can be the control of the master the ishwar now this is exactly what pallavi uh, was asking the other day that in the beginning you have to reject the body mind life you don't get confused with from those idea that you don't reject the world you don't reject the world what you reject is the imperfections in the physical world that you reject not the world you continue to remain in the world okay but you reject the tamas in the body you reject the not the rajas but the desires and uh, egoism selfishness all these things you get rid of anger wrath these things you get rid of so first you have to say no neti neti method i am not the body i am not the mind i am not the body later on when you have got that the you can take up your body mind life and change it but not in the beginning okay so that's what i said first there must be the freedom from the impersonal witness a complete separation from the body mind life a rejection and then a rejection of what a rejection of the identification with the body mind life not the rejection of body mind life but the rejection of the identification with the body mind okay so <clears throat> we finish the paragraph now we go to the next paragraph the initial advantage of this process of detachment tuesday is pallavi's day so if she is in a position to read she will read from there from there okay go ahead the initial advantage the initial advantage of this process of detachment is that one begins to understand one's own nature and all nature the detached witness is able to see entirely without the least blinding by egoism the play of our modes of the ignorance and to pursue it in all its ramifications coverings and subtleties for it is full of camouflage and disguise and snare and treachery and ruse instructed by long experience conscious of all act and condition as their interaction made wise of their processes he cannot any longer be overcome by their assaults surprised in their nets or deceived by their disguises at the same time he perceives the ego to be nothing better than a device and a sustaining knot of the interaction and perceiving it he is delivered from the illusion of the lower egoistic nature he escapes from the satric egoism of the altruist and the saint and the thinker he sh- shakes off from its control on his life impulses the rajasic egoism of the self seeker and ceases to be the laborious caterer of self interest and the pampered prisoner or toiling galley slave of passion and desire he slays with the light of knowledge the tamasic egoism of the ignorant or passive being dull unintelligent attached to the common round of human life thus convinced in conscience of the essential vice of the ego sense in all our personal action he seeks no longer to find a means of self correction and self liberation in the rajasic or satvic ego but looks above 
beyond the instruments and the working of nature to the master of works alone and his supreme shakti, the supreme prakriti. There alone, all being is pure and free and the rule of a divine truth possible. Okay, so now, after, after you have gone to the witness shell, the next stage, that's what is the point of The initial advantage of this process of detachment, detachment from the identification of body-mind life, the no more that, okay, is that one begins to understand one's own nature and all nature, not only your own nature, but all the forces of the, of the world, okay, which we discussed just now, Rajas, Tamas, and the Sattva, these are all the forces of nature, okay. Nature is always at the lowest level. Nature is that which is mechanical and unconscious, okay. All the movements, you start understanding their nature, you start understanding their subtleties, okay. So, the detached witness is able to see entirely, huh? not the word entirely, without the least blinding by egoism, the play of her modes of the ignorance and to pursue it into all its ramifications, coverings and subtleties. For it is full of camouflage and disguise and snare and treachery and views. Okay. Views is cunning. Huh? So, yeah. Deceptive maneuvers, tactics to cheat. That's what those means. Okay, so this is exactly what I mentioned. That at our level, we are very often deceiving ourselves. We feel that is something, and later on, you realize that really that's not what you really want. Okay. I remember one uh, thing when I was in knowledge. I just give you an example, simple example. When I was in knowledge, I had a very tight program. Okay. There used to be a uh, number of classes was huge. And sometimes I used, to, I used to enjoy it. But I used to feel sometimes that, oh, I would like to have some free time. It would be good. So that's what you think that you want. But later on, when I got the time, I saw that I really didn't want it. <laughs> so I was teaching myself. And I'm just telling you that what you think you want sometimes is not really the truth. You are deceiving yourself. Okay? You can also deceive yourself by saying, I am not attached to these things. But when the shortage of that thing is there, you realize that you really want it. So, they were saying, you find it, particularly the vital. The vital is, uh, uh, they use the word charlatan. Charlatan. Charlatan means an imposter. One who is pretending to be what he is not. Yes, we are all doing that. And when you discover that, it's wonderful. You see that, my God, look at the way the vital is built. That's exactly what we are saying here. You start understanding your own nature and all nature. Even universal nature, you begin to understand how it is working. Okay? The detached witness is able to see entirely without any, without the least blinding by egoism. How? Because when you have gone to the spiritual level of consciousness, level two, there is no ego. The ego is below. And you are only a witness. You are not identified with what a man life. You have gone above the ego. So, you see very clearly the play of our modes of the ignorance. What are the modes? Sattva, Rajas, Tamas. All of them have got their own characteristics. The Tamas characteristics are, as you said, okay, attachment, imperfection and laziness. Okay, so. And then the vital. The vital is also attachment, ego and desires. These are the uh, characteristics of the vital. And the mind, mainly ignorance, wrong ideas, attachment to wrong ideas. Those are the characteristics of the sattva. Okay. Egoism is the play of the Modes of the ignorance and to pursue it into all its ramifications, ramification branchings. Okay, it goes, it goes on. When you think that you have got hold of the truth, again you see that it is escaping. It's going into another branch, another branch. Coverings and subtleties. For it is full of camouflage. You know what is camouflage, huh? In nature, 
camouflage is a very very useful thing for animals but it is absolutely hopeless and very very horrible thing for yoga <laughs> there must be no camouflage at all and disguise and snare and treachery and use now he explained to you what is this camouflage and disguise he is giving a very interesting example about altruism in philanthropy instructed by long experience conscious of all act and condition as their interaction made wise of their processes they getting knowledge okay he cannot any longer be overcome by their assaults now note that he is using the word assault when a desire comes it absolutely attacks you and possesses you to conquer you we don't think of it that way but when a desire comes in it is actually attacking you and conquering you surprised in their nets or deceived by their disguises <coughs> in fact in one poem rishi he says the ambush of the desires so ambush also is a word which you attack suddenly with surprise your desires and all this is can really do that okay so <coughs> they suddenly catch you unawares and then they try to realize it of the desire <coughs> instructed by long experience conscious of all act and condition as their interaction made wise of their processes he cannot any longer be overcome by their assaults surprised in their nets or deceived by their disguises at the same time he perceives the ego to be nothing so that you realize because there is no ego at all there. it disappears to be nothing better than a device and a sustaining knot of their interaction and perceiving it he is delivered from the illusion of the lower egoistic nature now this very interesting the real word sustaining knot okay what is a sustaining knot you have a body you have a vital you have a mind and you have a soul now if these things are not collected together and made one your life will be miserable and that is exactly what happens sometimes with split personality okay that's why you use the word sustaining knot okay it's very interesting if the ego is not there in that way normally nature coordinates and connects all these three the vital the mind and the body it connects them and also the ego is the ego is on that connects and also your soul but soul is in the background but sometimes this mechanism in nature does not work and then you have the phenomenon of the split personality sometimes you behave like one person then your vital is very very strong and sometimes you behave like another person then your mental is very strong okay so this is not uncommon at all 10% of humanity suffers this problem 90% don't but 10% do it's not unusual at all okay so <clears throat> in fact the person themselves also there are many many videos on the internet you can check and you will see very interesting videos all you have to do is to say um split personality details and you will get many many videos so that is what the sustaining not if the sustaining is not there then you are in trouble okay रंगास No, not ego. <laughs> ego is the one that is uh, there. Why ego is not really sustaining not, but it's very. That is what makes you feel that this is who I am. No, that's the sustaining. Yes. Yes. It's the sustaining. I don't think that a split personality doesn't have any ego. They certainly have an ego. <laughs> no, two egos, two, two yeah. or more. Yeah, yeah. As you said, sometimes fourteen personalities. from yes. their past lives 
those personalities are not dissolved when you identify yourself in one of them. I, I saw one case where they said 28 personalities, but these are rare. Normally it is two personalities, maximum three. Okay? So this is what happens. Sustaining not. I was explaining sustaining not. Now I go to the next sentence. Uh, excuse me, excuse yes. me. Yes. In mother's conversations, yes. she's telling a disciple that do you know that you are 20 different personalities? That's right. And at different times, you portray a different, like once you are uh, very generous, once you are very miser. Yes. So those are also all the personalities in us. And dependent, depending on which is dominant and which is recessive, we put that forward. So we all have these traits or personalities uh, the dualities of life, which are there. Mother says distinctly that you are 20 personalities. No, but no. What you are saying is okay. But that happens to everybody. But that doesn't give the phenomenon of split personality. No, no. But then what happens is, uh, especially in case of a schizophrenic, he will be such a good person and the next moment, he's so very violent and, you know, uh, the, the, his whole mental makeup changes. Yes. And at other times, uh, he is gentle as a lamb. Yes. And you can't even say that this person is a schizophrenic. Yes, yes, that's right. So this was, uh, in India, we knew it long ago. But uh, in the West, this was discovered in the 1950s. Okay. They found that people are behaving at two different times in two different ways altogether. There is a very interesting movie. Huh? It's uh, called the... Uh, what is it called? The, I forgot the name of the uh, movie, but it's a very interesting movie, black and white movie where one person is behaving absolutely at one time and another time, another absolutely different time. And they are not conscious. When she is one, you are not conscious that the other thing is there. And the other one, when you are, you are not conscious of this one. But you can also be conscious of both. Okay, That also is possible. There are many, many interesting videos. Dr. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Ah, yeah, that's right. So, but there is a universal truth also. Just now what Jasmine was saying. That all these things are in us. In different proportions. Sometimes you can be very generous. Sometimes you can be very cruel. Okay. All these things are there. I've got plenty of I've seen in the ashram also like that. In fact, the vital is usually like that. The vital personality is like that. Okay. They can be very generous and they can also be very uh, cruel and very uh, harsh. That also is possible. Okay. So now let's go on to the next. He escapes from the sadhvik egoism of the altruist and the saint. So, so I'm saying very clearly, altruism, charity, philanthropy, humanitarianism, all these are very good, but they are not spiritual because they are ego oriented. Okay, it's because of your ego I am helping others. Okay, and it's very very still. Okay, there was a person who came to the ashram and said, "I'll give one lakh of rupees. You can make it a boarding." But I would like my name to be on the name plate at the gate. So this is exactly what philanthropy is. You are giving, but you want the full benefit for it. Now there are so many certainties. Now suppose somebody comes and says, Mother, I will give you one lakh rupees, make a boarding, but I don't want any mention of my name anywhere. Does this mean that he has no ego? It means that the ego is so subtle that now you say to yourself, look. How much? I'm not even taking credit for what I've done. Okay? That's an even subtler ego. So this is the thing, that when you think that you are not egoistic, it is very, very subtle. So the credit that you are taking for not being acknowledged as a donor is even subtler. You say ego all right. The ego is a fantastic imposter and deceives you all the time. Okay? So... This is what Shendri is saying. The altruism is the same. Even the same Shendri is not excluding the same also. 
I have become so, uh, so saintly. You are a saint, no doubt. You are very pure. In fact, in, he talks of the instrumental ego. Huh? When you realize that you are at a higher level of consciousness, then I am an instrument of the divine. I am not doing anything at all. So you feel that there is no ego. It becomes an instrumental ego. But I am the instrument of the divine. So that also is an ego. So ego is something very, very different to get it out. So he pointed out. Saint and sinner. He takes off from his control. Okay. From its control. On his life impulses. Logistic egoism of the self-seeker. And ceases to be the laborious caterer of self-interest. When we have a self-interest, we take a lot of effort to satisfy that uh, desire. So that's what it means by laborious caterer. You take a lot of trouble to cater to your desires okay, so, of self-interest. And the pampered prison or toiling galley slave of passion and desire. A galley slave, you know what a galley slave was, huh? In the earlier days, the only there was no diesel and there was no uh, mechanical power. There was not okay? no petrol, no. So it was only by wind power that you were good. And if the wind is not there, you have to put slaves in the and oar with oars. They said hard labor, galley slave. So that is what we do for our passion and desire. We go out of our way to take a lot of effort to satisfy the desire. But he, when he goes to the higher level of consciousness, there's chance of getting rid of all this is there. He slays with the light of knowledge, the tamasic egoism of the ignorant and for passive being, dull, unintelligent, attached to the common ground of human life. The last thing that the tamas, ignorance, passivity, dullness, unintelligence, Attached to the common ground of human life. Very, very ordinary motives in life. Very, very ordinary motives. Thus convinced and conscious of the essential vice of the ego sense in all our personal action, he seeks no longer to find a means of self-correction. He seeks no longer to find a means of self-correction and self-liberation in the Rajasik or Satyak ego but looks about. In fact, the defects in the body of my life are ego. Okay, but he is not even trying to get rid of it. This is the first stage, witness. Okay? But looks about beyond the instruments and the workings of nature. Which has instruments? Body, mind, life. And the working of nature, we have discussed. Sattva, Rajas, Thomas. He is a master of works alone and a supreme Shakti, the supreme triumph. And his supreme shakti, supreme goodness. So he looks above. Below I can't do anything, so let me look above. So he looks above for liberation. And these things only the divine can get rid of you. You can't get rid of them very easily. There alone. Is that the word alone? All the being is pure and free in the rule of divine truth. Possible. Where? At the Ishwara Shakti, Ishwara consciousness. Okay. So, what is the word he's using for that? Master of works. When he's talking about the master of works, is the Ishwara Shakti, Ishwara, okay. or the Purushottam. So, in this, this is what he's saying, and we've got only four minutes more, so we can't. Can we do the next para? Let me see how big it is. It's not very big. We can read it. We can discuss it next time. In this progression. So someone has to read it quickly. So Shall I read it? Yes, please go ahead. Read it. In this progression. <clears throat> In this progression, the first step is a certain detached superiority to the three modes of nature. <coughs> <clears throat>
The soul is inwardly separated and free from the lower prakriti, not involved in its coils, indifferent and glad above it. Nature continues to act in the triple round of her ancient habits. Desire, grief, and joy attack the heart. The instruments fall into inaction and obscurity and weariness. Light and peace come back into the heart and mind and body. But the soul stands unchanged and untouched by these things. Observing and unmoved by the grief and desire of the lower members, smiling at their joys and their strains, regarding and, overpower and unoverpowered by the feeling and the darknesses of the thought and the wildness or the weaknesses of the heart and nerves, uncompelled and unattached to the mind's illuminations and its relief and sense of ease, or of power in the return of light and gladness. It throws itself into none of these things, but waits unmoved for the intimation of a higher will and the intuitions of a greater luminous knowledge. Thus doing always, it becomes eventually free in its nature parts for the strife of the three modes and their insufficient values and imprisoning limits. For now, the lower prakriti feels progressively a compulsion from a higher shakti. The old habit to which it clings receives no further sanction and begins steadily to lose their frequency and force of recurrence. At last, it understands that it is called to a higher action and a better state, and however slowly, however reluctantly, with whatever initial or prolonged ill will and stumbling ignorance, it submits, turns, and prepares itself for the change. Yeah. So, this is the second Anumanta. He is describing the Anumanta. Very interesting. We will see that next time. They have already uh, they just completed 8.40, so we will do this next time. I will make a note that this is the Anumanta stage. There are other stages also of that. Jyata, Bhokta, Bharta. So this is the Anumanta stage. Okay? So I now close. Have a nice day, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.